One of the reasons that we feel strongly that Brad should hire a professional wedding planner um, is because for all the months going into planning, you can plan and plan so many details, uh, but unless you have someone there on the day to execute it, then it really defeats the purpose. Um, in planning all the details, our goal is to really enable the bride um, to have a wonderful wedding weekend, and not only the bride, but her family as well. Um, one of the big things that we uh, really encourage in, in our purpose as planners is to make sure that you're investing wisely um, in all your decisions and planning your wedding. And a big part of that is cultivating relationships. Um, I think one of the um, the most important aspects of our job is, is developing strong relationships with our vendors so that we can be prepared um, with any circumstance that arises. Um, for instance, it, your, the rain pattern changes and we need a tent at the last minute, then we have the wonderful relationships with vendors across the state that allow us um, to call, um, ask for a tent, and more than likely because of those relationships, we're gonna get it at the last minute. And I think those relationships are, are one reason why hiring a planner is um, incredibly important. So if Brad needs a planner, you're planning an event, a very large event that's expensive and needs to be done perfectly, and you've never done this before. Your mom may have years and years ago um, when she planned her wedding, but you know, you really need to hire a professional that knows how to do this, because a lot is on the line and it's one day, and so many things can go wrong and so many details can fall through the cracks, and a planner is really gonna walk you through the plot process the entire way, and lead you and guide you and set the pace. Nobody needs to plan a wedding in a day. And usually when a bride gets engaged, the first thing they wanna do is run and hire every vendor they possibly can that day. But that's the biggest mistake you can make. They need to sit back, take a deep breath, really think about the vendors, hire the right people. But if they've never done this before, how are they really gonna know you know, who is the best fit for their wedding. So that planner's gonna guide them through that process. The, guides, the planner's gonna help them manage a budget, come up with a design plan, but more importantly, all those tiny little details that you would never even consider, considered really do matter and make the wedding a success you know, on wedding day. And so that planner, if she's thorough and very detailed and knows her business, then she's gonna, you know, fill in the gaps and make sure that all of the puzzle pieces come together perfectly, all the vendors are informed, everybody knows what everybody is doing, everybody's educated, so that the day is seamless. So budget versus headcount is something that I talk about often because it's something that will affect the entire wedding. Um, I think when you first get married, everybody in your family and everything gets excited and they're ready to start inviting the world to the wedding. Um, but you're better off establishing kind of like a list for each family. Like maybe your partner's family can invite this many people. You can, you and your, you know, your fiance can invite this many people for friends and then your, you know, your parents' side. So if you kind of establish a list, you'll do a whole lot better on seeing where your budget's gonna fall because you don't realize that when you invite 300 people to a wedding that you're going to have to, you know, also pay for tables and linens and all of those financial responsibilities can make your budget a lot higher. So I think it's really important that, you know, you can maybe, if you kind of bring down your list a little bit, you can have some of the things that you want, some of the more of the details that you're wanting, um, unless budget allows for a higher guest count, of course. So there's different ways that we can help a girl stretch her budget when she has a certain, you know, a certain um, amount in mind that she's trying to stick with, or if she just has a certain venue that has several different rooms in the venue. I really suggest that we pick a central area and have two or three what I call wow factors. Because really, if you have 30 tables, people aren't going to remember exactly what was on every table. But they're going to remember if they walked into this amazing entrance arrangement or this escort card table that was very elaborate. Um, a lot of girls are really popular right now are ceiling installations. So, you know, they put their money towards a ceiling installation that can be enjoyed all night long. So I want to give you an insider's view of how I approach designing a wedding. It all starts with an interview. We meet. And it's not just an interview where you're interview, interviewing a professional. We're also interviewing you. It's a chance for us to sit down, learn each other's personalities. How are we going to work together over a nine month process? During that conversation, I ask you, where do you shop? What's date night? What's your favorite color? The obvious style questions. But my goal is to establish a 
personal relationship with you to where I can pick out those things that are true characteristic traits for you and your fiance. And there is a difference between a planner and a designer. Planners oftentimes are more worried about the timeliness, the timelines, the logistics, just making sure that the flow of an event is on time and held to schedule. Now, it's not to say that I don't care about those things, but to me, they more fall under logistics management. I'm worried with all of the floral, the linens, the lightings, the decor, making sure that every element visually comes together to tell one cohesive story. We often work hand in hand, planners and designers, um, and perhaps your wedding, you don't have it in your budget to work with both. Just make sure that who you hire um, is realistic with your expectations and they can bring your wedding day and what you think is important to the table. What I'd really want people to know about working with a planner is the whole point is to work from us from with us from the very beginning um, do do your most research from the get-go on who you are going to work with as a planner and then let that planner guide you through the process um, i would tell almost anyone 98 percent of the problems that we see happen on a wedding day normally come up whenever we weren't on the very first part of any of the hiring process with vendors, um, venue, um, pretty much any of that. We can, we can really help guide where you need to be for your wedding, what's going to make the most sense and work the best for your wedding. We see brides come in the door and they um, have a specific budget in mind, but they also have a specific number of people that they have to have, and then they have an expectation of what they want, but they don't understand that all of those three things have to fit together like a puzzle. And sometimes, you know, your budget may not allow to have that many people and at that expectation level. And so what we try and do at the beginning is to educate the bride and try and teach her like, you know, the wedding, figure out the wedding that she does want and then tell her how much that wedding does cost. And so sometimes I feel like we come at it from a backwards um, angle. The bride doesn't understand that, you know, that there's a place and a, a way to create these budgets. Um, and so coming in and getting educated um, before you sink your heels into a plan um, is just really important so that they understand that just because some a planner or a florist says that you can have the wedding of your expectations with that many people on that budget may not necessarily be the case. And just to educate yourself and know know more about what you get for your money um, will really just make the rest of the planning process a lot more enjoyable. The one thing that we think is the most important for brides to understand is that there are lots of different things that come up during planning and some of them can be kind of uncomfortable when you're you know, talking with in-laws and a couple of things that we think really need to be focused on before coming to us as your planner are guest list because that controls a lot of things. It controls your guest count, which then controls catering, um, which controls layout, which then controls flowers. So it's all kind of like a snowball effect. Everything affects everything else. And then we can't really help you with guest list. That's something that you have to do. Sit down with your in-laws and, you know, with your groom and with your parents and see who, who you can cut, who you can add, kind of what your budget is. And that's the second thing. You need to come to us either with a budget or, you know, with an understanding that we can kind of guide you in the right direction. If you give us either, you know, a from X to Z kind of range, then we can kind of guide you in that right position. There are a lot of wonderful planners and a lot of talented people in many different ways. And there are strictly planners, there are planners and designers, there are um, designers who offer uh, florals or props or a lot of different things that merge under what I feel like this umbrella of planning and design is. So really spend some time looking through uh, any anybody you know who might have worked with a particular planner before or follow if you've been following them for a little while interview them. Don't, don't just assume that because you've been following them you know everything about them, how they work, what that means for your wedding 
interview that person, talk to a couple of different planners if, if you really feel like you need to, you know, complete the picture as to how that process works for your wedding. Everyone has a different process, um, no one better than the other, but there is a better one for your wedding. Uh, make sure you do that research. So every penny matters. Knowing how to stretch your budget and allocate the right funds to go in the right places is very important. When I first meet a bride, we always identify the top three things that are important to you for your wedding, whether it be food, the entertainment, the flowers, knowing that the stationery may not be on the top of your list, we don't need hand calligraphy. We don't need a foil pressed invitation. We can do a digital print and it'd be just as visually appealing, but not heavy in hand. So there are different ways to approach the budget that are going to make the decor, make all the elements really go the distance. So I think a lot of the times people feel like they have to put things everywhere. Um, I feel like that's really true a lot when brides are maybe getting married in like a plantation home or something of that sort where there's a lot of separate rooms and they feel like they have to put something in every room on every mantle. Um, that's probably one of the worst things you can do. You really want to focus on focal points, um, things like head tables, uh, maybe the bar. Um, you know, instead of spreading everything so thin, focus on more key points that the guests are gonna see when they walk in. Because when guests kinda come in, they're not looking in every corner like you think they are. They're more set on when they walk in what they hit. It may be the bride's cake. It may be, you know, like I said, the head table or the dance floor. So focus more on focal points versus trying to spread everything so thin. Everything in your wedding is a design decision from what you wear, to the stationery you send out, to what the guys wear, to how the food presented, every little thing. I could go on and on. The obvious, the dress, the flowers, but there's so many things that brides don't think about. What stamp goes on the envelope? Um, are the napkins pressed once they're put on the tables? Um, every little thing along the way is a design decision that really doesn't need to be overlooked. Okay, so I know a lot of the times that venues have certain tables um, and certain chairs and stuff that they include with the venue itself, but you would be surprised even just renting, because table rentals are pretty simple and they're, they're not a whole lot of money. Um, so if, from a design perspective, you don't have to just necessarily put, you know, you don't have to always think about flowers and adding stuff. You can do different elements by, you know, like you're saying, not making your tables predictable. Oh, we have a bunch of round tables in here. It's set up like a conference per se. Versus maybe you bring in some high boys. Maybe you have some square tables and round tables mixed. Not only your table shapes and sizes, but also the centerpieces themselves doing a mix of high and low centerpieces to kind of create a little bit more of an aesthetic throughout the room makes for, you know, a great design. And again, you know, kind of just adding in those different elements you know, kind of helps with not necessarily having to have a bunch of decor and other things. You know, if you're you're on a tight budget with decor, that's a great way to kind of add a little bit of a, you know, a little bit more of a jazzy type look throughout the reception um, and, and give it a little bit more of a, you know, different look. When establishing the team for your wedding, there is a very big difference in planning and execution. Just because someone has an ability to see something that visually is appealing to them um, doesn't always mean they're going to be able to create it with their own two hands. So in hiring a planner, or if you're planning yourself, you may know that the images you see on Pinterest, they're beautiful and they look incredible, but are you able to tangibly do them with your own two hands? So work with a team or only plan things that you know you can execute yourself when I'm on site on a wedding day, I'm up and down ladders. My hands are on the flowers. I don't offer anything that I can't do myself. So in turn, as you're planning your big day, just remember to be realistic and only try to do the things you know will be able to come to life on your wedding day. One of the biggest mistakes that we see brides make um, is a lack of communication at the beginning of planning. Planning can be so exciting when it first really happens and you hire your planner and we're all so excited, um, but there are certain things that we have to act on quickly. You know, as planners, we're so fortunate to have wonderful relationships with vendors um, that oftentimes they'll do things for us as a planner that they won't do for brides without a planner. Um, and while we are 
can be magicians. We can pull rabbits out of hats. We can't do everything. So, for example, if we email a bride um, and say, here's some incre- you know, eight incredible bands that are available, and it takes you a month to get back to us, I can't promise that those bands are going to be available. I can't hold them per se, um, and that goes with, with multiple vendors. Um, so it, while it is beneficial that we have wonderful relationships, you have to communicate with us. Um, and we'll stay on top of brides to make sure that you communicate with us regularly, but if you um, just take too long to decide, we just unfortunately can't promise that a vendor will, will uh, still be available. We are an event planner and a designer. So when I have a client call me typically, um, you know, they have not done anything yet. But every once in a while, I'll have somebody say, well, I've already booked the venue. Well, that's sometimes um, something that I feel like brides can mess up on a lot because when you pick your venue and you haven't really decided what your vision is going to be. I feel like when you come to an event planner and a designer, you may have your look that you're going for, but we kind of really bring it to fruition for you. So when you choose things like maybe a DJ or, and you know, you maybe wanted a band instead, or you picked a photographer that you think after you thought about your vision that this would be better, I feel like an event designer kind of brings that to life for you. And you don't want to pick a, pick something quick just because you feel like you have to get something booked really quick. You really want to make sure that your venue goes for the look you're going for and holds the amount of things that you may be wanting in your event, not just people, but maybe you want, you know, lounging settings or a photo booth or things like that. You want to make sure that your venue is equipped for all that. And that's where a planner and designer can really help the client kind of pull all those things together. You know, a bride comes in and she's never been a bride before and she is envisioning her day um, on how it's gonna run and the timeline is so important. But sometimes we see brides come in and they don't have a real good reality on what that day really entails. And we may put out a photography timeline that has more time on it than she really wanted to have and she wants to fit a thousand pictures in an hour, and that's just not gonna happen. And so having um, the mindset that you've hired really good people to teach you and to you know plan your day for you in a way that they know is gonna work, I really strongly suggest for brides to sit back and trust the people that they've hired, especially when it comes down to the logistics um, and the timing of it all and the details of it all, and just letting them you know, run your day and prepare your day in a way that you're gonna feel relaxed and really enjoy your day. The timeline of the day is very, it, it's, it's still personal to the wedding. So, you know, we, we do try to be, um, we over timeline really. We pad that timeline with more time than you ever think you might need for something. Don't feel like something, oh yeah, well, it's just around the corner. We can just go, you know, hop in the car and do that. Anything that happens on a wedding day takes three times longer than what it would take in normal life. Um, you've got a whole entourage that's got to come with you. So um, we're, we're going to do our best to at least prepare you for what that timeline is going to feel like that day and still let you be part of those moments and not thinking, you know, because we are managing that day, you don't have to think about, uh, well, I've only got five minutes to do this and now we've got to rush here. Um, we're going to manage that for you so that you can actually be present, be in that moment and, and appreciate your first look, your first look with your dad, your, um, the moment you walk out in your wedding dress and your, your bridesmaids see you for the first time and um, all those really special moments that you want to capture. One thing that um, brides don't often do is fully trust their wedding vendors. And as much as they say they do, um, we see that that struggle of letting go a little bit of control and trusting us. Um, Vendors, we hire vendors for a reason and they're the best in their field or else we wouldn't hire them. Um, For example, We always tell our brides, when it comes to photography on a wedding day, please make a shot list. We want to understand, and the photographer wants to understand, what family and friend groupings are must-haves for you. But we really encourage you not to give a list of specific angles and specific photo locations that you, you want to see on your wedding day. Because as a creative, we want to trust our photographers and even our videographers to tell us where the best light is, what are the best, um, 
groupings that, that they see are gonna come across best at, at their craft. Um, so really, we wanna trust our vendors to make sure that they give us the best product that, that we can have. You know, I think relationships in this business are everything. Um, all of our business is based on referrals and, you know, it's just about connecting with people and trusting people. And so, whereas a bride may hire a planner because she knows the planner or she's had a friend use the planner, it's the same way with planners and vendors. So, when a planner gets comfortable with a vendor, they can recommend that vendor and say, you know, I know this vendor, I know how they work, I know all about them, I know what they're good at, I know what they're not good at, and that planner can really guide you through the process even better when she knows the vendor. Um, but that's not to say that the planner has to know every single vendor and isn't open to working with new people. You know, opening the door and working with new people really just, you know, could make the wedding so much better. Um, but putting the planner in a position every single time to work with all new vendors every single time doesn't um, really come out to help the planner, the vendors, or the bride. When your wedding planner and your designer has relationships with these vendors, first off, I feel like you get a whole lot more because they have a relationship. They've worked with them a lot. They all know each other. They know what each other expects of one another. And you know they're able to find the vendors that best suit your needs to make your design and your vision look the way it needs to look. So when I have you know someone come in and say, well, I want these certain, you know, flatware, this certain linen, you know, this certain kind of lighting. All of those things are resources that we know that we can put together within your budget and your look and that it'll come out professional and you don't have to worry about doing all that extra work. And, you know, when you have the right team of people, that can change your wedding completely. Because again, it's the relationships that you establish with these people that you know makes, makes the wedding complete of what it is. We have relationships that um, I've pulled favors on a wedding day that have, you know, I've called on vendors that have nothing to do with a wedding because <laughs> we gotta make something happen. Um, and our clients usually don't know anything about it, but we, we make happen what we need to make happen for our clients. And, that does not come overnight. That comes with working in your market, working with those vendors closely and building those solid relationships where pretty much any of us would die for the other to make sure that this day happens and that the couple can enjoy their wedding day. Put yourself in the mindset of your guest. What are they experiencing through the day? Are there stairs? Is there an elevator? What do they see when they first enter the room? Don't be selfish and just think about, this is my head table, I wanna see the beautiful room. You really have to think about the guests and their full experience of what they see on every level. Um, I often design in different, in different levels, um, floor, tabletop, eye level, ceiling, and beyond. So as you're designing or as you're planning your wedding, think about those things. When you go into a ballroom that may not have the best carpet, Lighting is your best friend. Once all the tables are down, the beautiful table linens are on, you're not gonna see the carpet. So don't get hung up on that design dilemma. Think about the guests walking it. They're not always looking down, they're looking up. They're looking at the bride, they're looking at the cake, at the band. Really think about the different point of view and the guest perspective. We always say, hope for the best, plan for the worst. Um, weather happens, and one thing that we encourage brides to consider when choosing a venue is that there could possibly be um, an instance of inclement weather, and that's out of our control. Um, we always plan a plan A, of course, a plan B, and sometimes we have to go to a plan C. And what we want brides to know is that you, you need to love all three plans as much as you love your ideal scenario um, because you just don't know what could happen the week of the wedding and that's where you really have to trust your vendors to know we're going to guide you to the best um, to the best plan and sometimes we have to think beyond just the wedding day um, yes while it may rain on the wedding day and we have to consider a plan what happens in the days leading up to that and a lot of that can affect setup um, for our vendors and we have to consider their safety and the impact that setup's going to have on your overall vision as well setup and production is a big thing when it comes down to scheduling and kind of what vendors need to work together so if you're installing a tent but the tent needs lighting then both of those 
vendors need to kind of be able to talk and communicate. And we had one wedding in particular where we needed last minute tents, we needed last minute generators, last minute lighting, and all of those things we had to kind of throw together. And not that that was an issue, we got the tents, we got the lighting, but then it was a plan B and it rained and it rained hard and we lost power because the generator was flooded, but that goes back to having a good team of vendors that you can trust and rely on, which we as planners help you do. And everything got worked out, bride, dad, groom, never knew anything was going on, so. We always have girls that come in with their consultations and they have all these beautiful inspiration pictures, Pinterest boards, and really, you know, I think it's our job as the creatives and the designers to really explain to the girls what is realistic about those pictures because they bring in a lot of styled shoot images, they bring in a lot of really over the top images. So I like to kind of explain to them what they can get for their expectations within their budget realm as well. When a bride comes in with a Pinterest board and you know has all of these dreams and expectations of what they want their wedding to look like and they A, don't know how that was done and B, don't know how much it cost. And so if the sky's the limit and no budget um, is on the table, which is very rare, then of course anything can be done. Um, but it's just a matter of knowing that some of the pictures that they're finding on Pinterest may be a styled shoot. It might have been for 10 people and she's trying to plan for 300. Um, it may have been one corner of the reception in a room full of emptiness and not understanding that we can't do that, that, that wouldn't look right in a reality. And so it's just kind of helping the bride understand and seeing big picture um, when we come and sit down and do the design plan, it's a lot easier to take that Pinterest board from the beginning, which I love when a bride has one. It kind of helps me get to know the bride and her style, but then let me use that to create her a plan that fits in her budget and with her expectations, her venue, and with her vendors. Then um, everything seems to come together a lot easier. So just using that Pinterest board as an inspiration rather than you know a mandatory have to have less. Any of your vendors who are working on your wedding love what they do. They, it is an art to them, it is their craft, it is their life. Work is life for us. That I don't know any other industry that works as crazy hours for um, somebody else's huge day. Um, so we clearly love what we do and we want to share that with you so that you can love your wedding day. Think about the things you love. What inspires you? Colors, patterns, textures, fashion, architecture. Think of those things and base the design of your wedding around the things you love and that are couple specific to you. We do a ton of site visits. You know, there's there are some venues that we know like the back of our hand. We've had a lot of weddings in that spot or they just happen to be very uncomplicated. You know, maybe they're open air. There's not a lot of corners and walls. So, you know, there's not a whole lot to work around. Those are easy venues, but we want to walk through and make sure you know what the logistics are once they hit that site. And not only that, because they have expectations as to having wonderful photos and a wonderful video, what does that mean whenever that team is traveling with them through this, this space and their layout and their, um, their floral scheme if they've got things hanging from the ceiling or um, huge displays on uh, a bar or you know something like that. How do we make sure that those focal points are part of your day and you still get to like go through the entire process and, and enjoy the day and everything is captured the way you want it to. Um, that's kind of what we try to accomplish on a site visit. And sometimes, you know, depending on where it is and you know, the vendor team on it, if it's a brand new ven venue for everyone, hey, let's get, the, um, let's get the creative team together and walk through it all together. Let's have the photographer out, let's have video out so that we know exactly how, you know, are we setting up the ceremony correctly? You know, is, is this okay for photos? Be, be prepared, this is our background whenever you're walking out. Um, there's, there's a lot of angles to consider. One thing that, one common mistake that we see in planning is brides really staying on top of Pinterest and 
the number one thing we tell brides when they come to our office is get away from Pinterest. We don't want to have cookie cutter weddings in, in the wedding industry. We want to have fun, create, creative uh, weddings because we want to tell each bride's unique story. We don't want to copy your sister's wedding. We don't want to copy your best friend's wedding because it's not does not tell the story of, of you and your fiance. And that to us is the most important. But another reason that Pinterest can be so negative is that it gives you an unrealistic expectation of what to expect uh, from floral designers or lighting designers or even photographers and videographers. Um, we want you to be flexible, and that goes back to trusting your vendors. Trust your vendors that they understand your aesthetic. Um, your vision may not always be your reality. Looking at a, a picture on Pinterest, there may be so many different aspects. It could be a photo shoot. Um, it could be one table that was designed, but that table times, times 12 um, could be way over your budget. So going into a vendor, have some flexibility with, with your vision. Let them, let them see what inspires you and what excites you and let them create take it and create their, their own, uh, turn it into their own. Um, I think that's the best way that you're gonna have your, your vision come to reality is being flexible and knowing that the aesthetics can change. The more rigid you are on your overall vision, the more um, you're, willing to, um, you're willing to be flexible is the happier you're gonna be in the end result. One thing that I have seen is people assume, well, these are the people that are top of mind or I see working in a particular area all the time. That's, well, that's who I'm going to use for my wedding. Or I've had three friends use the same photographer. So clearly that's who I'm supposed to use. They are probably a wonderful photographer. That doesn't necessarily mean that they are perfect for you. Uh, one of the things that we like doing for our clients is matching you specifically. We play matchmaker between you and your vendors. Um, we want that to, to really make up what is a personal wedding, a very customized wedding for you so that you're not having your friend's wedding, you're having your wedding. Um, and it's, it's gonna speak to you forever because it was made just for you. The absolute best advice that we can give to a bride is marriage first and wedding second. And we say that because yes, the wedding is great and there's all this hoopla and build up to the planning and everything and the execution and you know, your band and your food and you're super excited because you have all your friends there with you. But after that's done and gone, you have you and your husband and your marriage is the center of everything. So we always say, you know, really think about it and think about your priorities and what's important. Um, and yes, you obviously want a beautiful wedding, but your marriage is what's going to last you through your lifetime. Mm -hmm.